My Harlem Portraits. I'm Maria Grazia Cavenaghi, and I am your host. And we have a wonderful guest here with us today, who is a, a judge. She is a Supreme Court judge of the state of New York, civil term. She is the chair of New York City Bar Association, in particular the Special Committee to Encourage Judicial Service. She's the past president of the National Association of Women Judges, former supervising judge of civil court in New York, New York County. She's a former adjunct professor at Fordham University School of Law, where she taught for 10 years. I want to welcome you and thank you for being here because I know your time is precious and you have to make time to come here. So it means a lot for me. Well, Maria, I, I just want to say I feel so welcome and I really thank you for having me on your show. I am honored because you have received also numerous professional achievements and community service awards and so on. You speak very often in panels, in conferences, and you are passionate, and that's one thing that we're going to talk about. Okay. We are passionate uh, about mentoring. You underline the importance of diversity as in inclusion in the legal um, profession, and you are very, very strong on pushing women's advancement and empowerment because you know how difficult it is for women to advance. Absolutely. We all know that. So thank you so much for all that. You are one of the youngest African-American women to be appointed to the Supreme Court. I don't know about that. <laughs> 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 have good genes. <laughs> you have good genes. <laughs> but yes. I was elected to Supreme Court. Now, yes. certainly, uh, when I was elected to civil court, I believe I was 38 years old. So that's, that's, what that's I'm rather young. Because I've known you for the longest, and I know that uh, you were extremely young when you were appointed judge the first time. So, so. Because not everybody knows mm -hmm. how a judge is, uh, how you become a judge. Sure. This is very important. Sure. Uh, because not everybody knows that you are also elected judge. Correct. So let's tell our viewers sure. how it happens. It really depends on the jurisdiction. There are some states where judges are appointed. In New York, judges are both appointed and elected. So for civil court, judges are elected to that court, to Supreme Court, which is the higher mm. trial court. Judges are also elected. Civil court is a 10-year term. Supreme Court is a 14-year term. You also have surrogates uh, court. That's the court that deals with trust in estates, the affairs of decedents. That court, judges are also elected. Then you have lower criminal court, uh, family court, and those judges are appointed by the mayor of the city of New York. You also have housing court, and those judges are appointed as well. Then with respect to the higher levels, the appellate division, mm -hmm. that is a position that is appointed by the governor and the highest court in the state of New York is the Court of Appeals. And once again, the governor appoints those judges. So it's a very complicated uh, system. But it's very important to know that in your case, you have been elected. I have been elected. I've been on the bench now for 14 years. 14 years. Yes. So you have to run again well, soon? Uh, no, I have 10 more years. I was elected to a 14-year term. I've served 10 out of the 14, mm -hmm. so another 10 years, I would then be up for re-election at that time. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So we need to know that because it's also important that the people know that they can elect the judges and who their judges are. And how do they find out about that? We are on the ballot, but I really encourage the public to get involved. And I'm going to talk about New York County. There is something called the Democratic uh, Screening Panel, where the chair of the Democratic Committee invites organizations to participate. Mm -hmm. It could be bar associations, it could be community service organizations. And the head of that organization will appoint a person to sit on a screening panel where these individuals evaluate our qualifications to become a candidate. Uh, if we are successful, then I'll talk about civil court. Mm -hmm. You have the district leaders. District leaders are elected uh, persons. Mm -hmm. They do not get paid, but they work so hard, and we have to get their support. Mm -hmm. Certainly, when it comes to Supreme Court, we have to go through that same screening mm -hmm. uh, panel process, but then we have to be nominated at the convention. And uh, certainly, once again, it's really important to have the uh, support of the different community leaders, the political mm -hmm. uh, officials. So the, it is very important because what you do really regulate our lives. Absolutely. In every aspect. You know, absolutely. And the thing is this, there are so many issues facing us today. And I am a big advocate wherever I go to, to let the public know how important it is to vote. And I'm not endorsing any candidate, judges cannot be political. Mm -hmm. But I take the position that is important to vote. Why? Because it makes a difference on the laws that are enacted mm -hmm. or not. Exactly. And it also makes a difference on the types of persons that you will come before with respect to a court case. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really believe it's so important for diversity and inclusion in the legal profession because it's a component of access to justice. Also, it really strengthens the public's trust in the institution. When you have judges that are truly reflective of the community. Yes. That's that's fundamental. Yes. And we know we see what's going on now. And I won't say any more because I know you can't talk about anything like that. But I, I will say this, you know, I think right now it's really important to focus on the importance of the rule of law as well as the independence of the judiciary. And that is why I really encourage the public to find out more about really the, the proper role mm. of a judge. How does a judge get appointed? How does a judge get elected? And for those jurisdictions in which you have to elect your judges, you should know who that person is before you decide to pull the lever or, or not to pull exactly. the lever. I think we're electronic now, so <laughs> fill in the dot. <laughs> but it's, it's really important. And I just believe in civic engagement throughout that certainly you do not have to be a lawyer to get involved mm. in the judicial selection uh, process. You can be a district leader and not be a lawyer. You can be a judicial delegate, mm. and these are the individuals who nominate at the convention for state Supreme Court. But it's important to get involved. Uh, and this cannot be underlined enough. Mm -hmm. Because, and especially in 2020, 
this is a year that is going to be fundamental, not only for what's happening in the U.S., but for what is going to happen in the world. Because whoever is president in this country has an incredible power over what's going on in the rest of the world, fortunately or unfortunately. So well, you know, I'm not just gonna, go and vote. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm talking about the importance of voting. And oh, I've yes. made it clear because it really has a bearing on the laws that are enacted or not, as well as the people who enact the laws and certainly the judges who have to administer the law. Absolutely. So I want to be clear. Yes. <laughs> I want to keep my job. <laughs> she is talking about something. I'm talking about a general thing, which is elections in general, judges, uh, your representative in, in the Senate, your representative in the, in the House, and so on and so on. Local representative, everything is important. We need to participate because if we don't participate, then we can criticize. So that's important. Anyway, so that said, you are currently chair of the New York City Bar Association the Special Committee to Encourage Judicial Service. What does that mean? So this is a committee that presents a biennial program mm -hmm. the first Saturday in December about how to become a judge. We have panels all throughout the day. This usually starts at about 9 a.m. and it ends about 3 p.m. where we have not only state court judges, mm -hmm. but we also have federal judges. court judges. And we go through the process about what they need to do, mm -hmm. what's going to be required, what are the steps that you have to take in order to become a judge. And it's really been an honor to serve in this capacity. I will be rolling off in September. Mm -hmm. but not only the courts, the different courts, but the particular boroughs. So we have judges from the five boroughs mm -hmm. because each borough is very unique. Mm -hmm. And there may be things that are special to, let's say, the Bronx that are a little different mm -hmm. than the other boroughs. So it's a wealth of knowledge. We give them a booklet to explain everything. And it's really been a great success. That's a, a very, very important role that you have there also. And you are a member of the Board of Overseers of the Benjamin Cardozo School of Law. Sure. Where you received your law degree. I have to tell you, I could have never imagined <laughs> that one day I would be invited to, to serve. And I remember my first day, like uh, yesterday, when I walked in the door, certainly the school looks much different <laughs> now than it did then, but never in my wildest imagination would I think that I would sit on the on board of, of a law school that's just doing some phenomenal uh, things in technology, in mediation, really creative leadership. Uh, by the dean. So I have to say that I have been very blessed and fortunate in my career. I come from a single parent household. I'm a product of the public school system. And certainly, I come from humble means. And I always say that I want to use my story to motivate someone else, encourage someone else to say, if I can do it, absolutely that you can do it as well. Never thought I was going to be a judge, never thought that I would be the president of the National Association of Women Judges, never thought I would be an adjunct uh, professor, but I have really been fortunate that individuals have seen something in me. And that and that's why it's so important to mentor. If you mm -hmm. see someone who has the ability, you have to pour into them. You have to give them 
opportunity. And, and certainly, Maria, I mean, you've been one of those persons. I mean, we won't say how long you've known me, <laughs> but people who are going to support you. And so, you know, I'm forever grateful to you by that love and support that you have given to me steadfast throughout the years. Well, you deserve all the love and support because you have worked so much. Wh whatever you have reached, the, the levels you have reached, you've reached them not just because you have been blessed and fortunate, but because you worked for it. You deserve it. Well, I think it's a, com you know, it's a combination. I mean, it's obviously, I'm a person of faith, so, you know, uh, God has a lot to do mm -hmm. with this. And, and certainly uh, the love of my friends, family, and of course, hard work, but it's all of these things. Together. Together. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you were saying, you were talking about being past president of the National Association of Women Judges. Yes. In that role, you did some really trailblazing things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you organized some um, innovative legal education for mm -hmm. the bench, the bar, and for the community. Yeah. And some of the topics, cybersecurity and the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. you must tell me what that is, artificial intelligence, the dark web and virtual currencies, mm -hmm. e-discovery, bail reform, on which we have been talking a lot about. Absolutely. The opioid crisis, mental wellness, dementia, dementia in the courtroom, mm -hmm. engaging millennials, and building a personal brand. Right. Amazing. You know, the thing is, I think that very often, uh, how can I say it? And this is my personal mm -hmm. opinion, where I believe that as far as the public, as far as uh, even the attorneys, judges are individuals. Mm -hmm. We happen to have a title, but we are people just like they are. And the thing is, I believe it's important to remove the mystique of who a judge is. And really, all three communities can work together mm -hmm. for the furtherance of justice. So when I was the president, we held a mid-year conference here in Brooklyn, and I wanted more people to really know about this great organization. Mm -hmm. So open it up. Open it up to uh, the community. Open it up to attorneys. Now, certainly, NAWJ is comprised of judges, comprised of attorneys, comprised of law students, even non-lawyers. If you are committed to our mission of access to justice for all, you can join. Fantastic. Now, I you wouldn't be a voting that. member, you yeah. know, but, but you can join. So, so for me, I wanted to bring all three of these communities together. And we actually, uh, my committee, and particularly myself, we interviewed people to know, you know, what do you want to learn more about? Mm -hmm. We read the newspapers. We understand about the opioid crisis, what is going on. Certainly, it's a lot of talk about millennials, how they have changed the landscape, really the legal uh, profession in particular, technology. Technology is driving every facet of our community, but particularly the legal profession. So you read the paper, you, you, uh, uh, you know, read and, and see on TV about the hacks, cybersecurity, that's very important. E-discovery, our courts are becoming more involved with technology, electronic filing, uh, and the like. So all of these things are important when we're talking about dementia. Certainly, we, we know about that disease. And with the graying of America, people are living longer. And with that, they're going to be 
certain issues. So all of these things and also about building your personal brand because certainly you need that as you go through your professional career and dealing with mindfulness as well, dealing with how to be, uh, well, let me say it this way, to be a healthy professional because mm -hmm. really, if you're gonna be a good professional, you have to have a good sense of well-being. So we also dealt with that as well. And you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we accomplished. Because you push your limits and you go beyond and you're always striving to do more and to do better for everybody. And that's, I've noticed that over the year that I've known you, I have no doubt about that. No, oh, thank you. So that's why you, you got where, where you got also. You also organize a legislative caucus on Capitol Hill. What was the focus? So, and what is the legislative mm -hmm. caucus? Sure. So the organization has a legislative caucus mm -hmm. uh, every year mm -hmm. where we convene on Capitol Hill, and each year it is a uh, different Topic. theme. And the committee uh, that was in charge titled it hashtag we too in the legal workplace. And I thought that was such mm -hmm. a catchy topic that that was something that we could brand. And certainly um, we received pro bono legal assistance. And I'm happy to say that is trademarked. NAWJ ah. has the trademark. Hashtag we too in the legal workplace. And certainly that was an event where we convened uh, with various thought leaders and, and certainly uh, some of the female representatives to talk about how to create a safe and workplace why? free of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is another of the hot topics Every day you hear about that more and more. And I don't think it's because it's happening more, but it's because now it's coming out. Things that have never been discovered before, they're coming out because times have changed. Yes, and I also think it's because people are now willing to tell their story. And it's important to speak out because when you tell your story, you either encourage someone or let someone know, you know what, I it's okay. And so when you tell your story, that gives a lot of power, not only to yourself, but it also empowers others not to be afraid to speak up and speak and out. And not to feel alone because they Absolutely. see someone else Absolutely. is going through the same thing that Absolutely. they're going through. So you, you are, Constantly promoting and the advancement and empowerment of women, of women in every possible way, and you do that also through membership in various women's organizations. Mm -hmm. Let's talk just a little bit about that because we only maybe yeah. one minute left. Sure, um, I'm a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, although I am wearing red. You know, <laughs> but I, I have to say, you know, women of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated, we look good in all colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> seriously, you know, to my Delta sisters, listen, we're all sisters and we're all in this uh, together. But um, the founding chapter of 100 uh, black women, and, and certainly what I'm now excited about, I'm a new executive committee member uh, for the women in law section of the New York State Bar Association. And uh, it's the fastest growing organization. So the bottom line is when it comes to women's empowerment, we also have to invite men to the table yes. so that they can partner with us because we're all affected. When Absolutely. one goes up, we all go up. 
Absolutely, it's fundamental because otherwise it's, it's, a, it's a talk among women and the other part, which is the part who has to also have a different way of seeing things, right. does not participate. And we need their participation to make them understand that times have changed. And they're partners. Yes. So this is very, very important. You are also the recipient of numerous uh, professional achievement and community service awards. Which ones have a uh, particular uh -huh. significance for you? <laughs> uh, you know, now I may get in trouble for this. <laughs> you know, l let me say it this way. Um, certainly, each honor and recognition that I give, they're really also honoring my mother, Eleanor Kennedy. Mm -hmm. They're honoring my late grandmother, uh, Doris Peace, and all the people that have poured into me. But certainly, my 35th high school reunion is next month, Brooklyn Tech. Judges are not supposed to be biased, but I'm biased about Brooklyn Tech. It's the best <laughs> high school. And uh, I'm on the wall. I have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh my God, congratulations. Fantastic, so this is, <laughs> this is beautiful. And on this wonderful note, we have to wrap up I because know. we are at the end, but you are going to come back. I, hope I know so. it's very difficult for you to find the time, but whenever you have a time, you give me a call and say, Maria, I'll be free that day at that time, and we get the studio. And we have Sounds good. another. Sounds good. All right, so thank you for being with us. Thank you. Sharing your thank knowledge. You. Let's repeat, it's important. Find out who are the judges yes. that you can elect. Go and participate because it's very, very important that we have this knowledge. So thank you again for being with My Harlem Portraits. We will see you next time, 12.30 on Saturday. Thank you so much and thank you again.